Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this episode of Coding with Nihilus. Uh, I think this is our second one after we've kind of restarted things up again. Um, I have Blog here with me, so I'm a developer advocate at Nihilus. Hi, I'm Black, Senior Developer Advocate here at Nihilus. Awesome. Uh, so we are going to get rolling on this live stream, and I think we're going to switch it up a little bit. So I know on the last one we talked about synchronous, making calls for calendar uh, data using the Ruby uh, SDK. And now we're going to look at how we can use Nihilus webhooks in API v3. So you'll notice I will mention v3 quite a bit, and this is something that's our daily language. <laughs> Every third word is v3 right now because we have a lot going on with API v3. So do check out our latest blog post on introducing the Nihilus APIs, or version three of our APIs, which are uh, just up, it's just the next level of everything that we're doing at Nihilus. So it's our next generation, or it's our next generation platform and foundation that we're going to build on, and we want developers to build on going forward. Uh, so we will touch on the API v3s. I think we're going to look at the Node SDK today, uh, and we'll talk about the webhooks as well. Uh, but yeah, maybe just to start here, we're going to use two different tools for this live stream. So the first one is going to be the Nihilus APIs. And the way I like to describe the Nihilus APIs is a single integration for multiple platforms and providers that offer email, calendar, and contacts. So you may have users that are on Microsoft. You may have users on Google. To manage all those integrations, you can leave it to Nihilus to do that for you. And, uh, and one thing we're going to dive into a bit deeper is synchronous versus asynchronous data. So anytime you make an API call, that is more so synchronous. So you're requesting information from a server. As we saw on Wednesday, we were requesting events, we were requesting calendar information, and this is on a, a per request basis. And the difference with async is this is where you can request information to be sent to you peri periodically or as needed. And this is where webhooks come in, and it's more along the lines of event-driven design where you can be told when something's happened, like when a calendar uh, event, event was updated or created, and then you can act based on that. So you can decide, okay, this user's calendar is updated. What do I need to do afterwards? Or what could I do afterwards? Uh, so it's a different way of thinking, and it's also a more performant way of scaling your application where you don't have to constantly make requests. You can just be told when something happens and act on that. Yep. And to work through this live stream, we're going to be using a, a friendly developer tool. We're going to be using Pipedream which we've covered in the past. And I think Blog made a, a post on our top videos. And I think Pipedream was one of our top videos on how to use webhooks and Pipedream. Yep, that's true. Uh, uh, so Pipedream, uh, it can be described as an API integration platform. So it's a great way to integrate multiple APIs and work with APIs in a, in a low code fashion. So we'll take a look at the UI and how we can set up a Pipedream endpoint, and then we can integrate or, or use that with uh, Nihilus webhooks. Awesome. So we're gonna we're gonna go through this in four steps. So Nihilus and Pipedream in four steps. Uh, mm -hmm. But before we jump in and do that, we would love if you can like and subscribe. Yeah, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, like our episodes, and click on the little bell to get notified. So yeah, so we'd love for you to be updated on any time we have content coming out. We have a lot of content coming out. Uh, I like the confetti, by the way. That's new, isn't it? Yeah, they changed it. I think they changed the balloons for the confetti. Gotcha. OK. Well, yeah, so definitely like and subscribe. Uh, excited to have you to join us. Uh, and we're, we're going to share a lot more throughout the live stream and how you can connect with us afterwards as well. So let's go to the first step, which is going to be setting up Pipedream. So let me share my screen. Let's see, to do, do, do present. OK. So here we go. I'm just going to full screen that, and I'll zoom in. So once you sign up for Pipedream, this is where you're going to land on their dashboard. Uh, so with the dashboard, uh, you can go ahead and create a new project. And that's how they like you to kind of encapsulate the entire project that you're working on. So for us, we're going to create a new project, and we're going to call it uh, Nihilus Webhooks. Mm -hmm. And we're going to create the project. And we'll just go through the steps very quickly in terms of what we need to do. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create an actual workflow. And the idea behind a workflow is this is where you can actually start receiving uh, an endpoint. And you can start configuring how the endpoint is going to respond to a Nihilus webhook. Uh -huh, cool. 
So this is going to be the first step. So here I'm just going to say Nihilus webhook. And we're going to leave uh, a lot of the configuration out for now. You can revisit this later. Um, so we're going to create the workflow. Mm -hmm. And this is going to drop us into an editor. Um, and the idea here is uh, it's like a workflow editor. And what we're really focused on is, is kind of creating an endpoint to receive a webhook. So that's one of the first or second options available to us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to click. Uh, it can either be new HTTP webhook request or just HTTP webhook. It's the same thing. Okay. Um, and then from there, we're going to select the response. So I'm just going to select trigger an inbound HTTP request. And here we're going to follow along. And we're just going to take the actual HTTP response is the one thing that we're going to modify here. And oh, we'll okay. talk about why we need to modify this in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but for this, what we're going to do is we're going to ask it to return a custom response from your workflow. So the reason we're doing this is anytime we need to set up a webhook, a, a Nihilus webhook, mm -hmm. uh, it requires the endpoint to be active and responding to Nihilus in a certain way. So what Nihilus is going to do is it's going to send a webhook challenge or challenge query to the endpoint mm -hmm. to ensure that that value is sent back to Nihilus before it can actually initiate or successfully create the webhook for you. So it's just making sure it's an active endpoint and that it's working as expected before the webhook start coming through the actual pipe dream endpoint. So we'll take a look at this in a section in a second. So let's go ahead and click save and continue. Mm -hmm. And so this is the actual URL of our webhook. So we can mm -hmm. go ahead and copy this and use this going forward anytime we want to create a webhook uh, with Nihilus, and we want to test it out using Pipedream. Um, so this cool. is the first step. Uh, pretty much, we've set up Pipedream. Uh, we got our endpoint, and we told it that we're gonna we're gonna respond or have a custom response uh, from any time this webhook is called. So I just want to jump over to creating a custom response. So I'll show you what that looks like. So that's going to be step two. So add custom code for a webhook challenge. So we're going to continue further down, and we're going to we're going to use the plus sign. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to decide to run custom code. Mm -hmm. So in here, what you can do is you can actually receive any of the information that's sent to you, and you can respond to it from this part of the actual workflow. So if you want to take any of the query parameters or send them back, you can go ahead and do that. And as well, you can send back a 200 response. Um, as well to the webhook, just to tell Nihilus, hey, this webhook was received successfully. So I'm going to just share uh, uh, the code that's already complete, and I'll walk you through what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So here is the actual code that we're going to use. And the idea behind this is there, there are two steps. So let me highlight the two steps here. So the first step is let's first inspect the query, query parameters um, to ensure that a, a challenge query exists. So if a challenge parameter exists in the query parameters, we're going to respond with a status 200 to tell Nihilus, OK, I've received the response. And as well, um, I want to send back the actual challenge parameter to Nihilus. So this is a one-time event anytime you set up a webhook. It only happens once. When yeah. Nihilus just wants to confirm the endpoint is active and you send back the actual challenge parameter. And then afterwards, going forward, anytime you send a webhook to this endpoint, all we require, all Nihilus rule requires is that you send back a status 200 at least to tell uh, Nihilus that this webhook was successfully received. Mm -hmm. And there, and, and then from there, once you've done these two steps, you can decide what you want to do afterwards in terms of like, uh, how do you want to handle the webhook? So there may be some action you want to complete or something you want to do afterwards. But these are the necessary steps you need to kind of use to set up a webhook and as well to respond to knowledge for every webhook that you actually receive. Cool. So now that we have kind of set everything up in Pipedream, I just want to show you what the UI looks like again. So once you're out of the actual uh, workflow editor, mm -hmm. so let me go back one. We're going to go to testing Gee, one sec i think it's this one here so we're just going to go to the webhook challenge and this is what it will look like 
um, in terms of the dashboard. So it's waiting for events to occur. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the actual Node SDK and create a webhook, just initiate a webhook. Nice. Um, and then we can take a look and inspect what happens in Postman. Mm -hmm. So let me jump over to Visual Studio Code. So we're going to jump to the third step, which is we're going to set up the actual webhook. Uh, let me see. There we go. So let's share the entire screen. Uh, so now we're going to be on the third step, which is we're going to set up the Nihilus Node SDK. So let me jump over. And this is what uh, the code looks like. So I'll, I'll take you through a step by step where first we're importing our, our libraries. So we're in importing any environment variables. We're importing the Nihilus. Um, uh, SDK. So the SDK has been updated for v3 of our APIs. And then, and from there, we're actually configuring the Nihilus client. So we actually can start using it to create a webhook. And inside of this function, so this is an async function, uh, create webhook. We, we place everything in a try cache just to make sure we catch any errors. And here is where we're actually creating the webhook. So I'll walk you through the, the steps of to the steps required to create a webhook. So you'll do nihilus.webhook.create. And from there, we're going to pass in the request body. So this is going to be a post request. And we're going to pass in first and foremost the type of webhook that we're, we're looking to create. So you can create many webhooks uh, based off of different events that occur in your user's communication data, in your calendars, emails, and contacts. In this case, we're going to create the event-created webhook trigger. And then here, we're going to actually pass in the actual pipe dream uh, endpoint as mm -hmm. the the webhook URL. So that's the, the URL that I showed you earlier. And then you can provide a description. And as well, you can enter in a notification email address. So for any reason, if the webhook start failing, you'll get a notification at this email. So, so far, what we've done, we've just kind of gone through the code for actually creating a webhook using the Nihilus node SDK. Uh, so we have the pipe dream set up to receive our initial webhook request to set up a webhook. We have the node SDK. So we can go ahead and run this in the actual terminal to see what shows up. So I'm going to run this code. And it says something about unable to verify webhook URL. So let me just take a look. I think this is just a, a, a property that we're just in the process of updating. So it should be webhook URL, but I'm going to go with callback URL for now. Mm -hmm. So, oh, it says unable to verify webhook URL. So let me take a look at the error. One sec. This is always a fun time when we do live <laughs> coding. So give me one second here. Yeah, exactly. uh, let me just take, it has to do with the environment variable, but I'm going to check. So... This way, people can see that we are, are actually live. So this is not recorded. <laughs> this is not scripted. It's just happening, <laughs> and we made mistakes for sure. So, yeah, let me take a look and see if I can get this to run. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Do, do, do. The environment variable needs to be updated. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, um, so I think it was just an environment variable um, that got renamed, but I will share my screen again and we can take a look. Cool. There we go. So I guess let's jump into the actual terminal again. And here, I just ran the code, create a webhook. And nice. we got the actual details of the webhook. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the information we passed in, the, the description, the trigger type, the endpoint, which is the actual pipe dream endpoint. And it told us that the status is active. So it's been successfully created. Oh, nice. So I just want to show everyone what this looks like inside of pipe dream. Um, so in pipe dream, we actually get all the requests that are sent to us. 
So from here, we can actually take a look at everything. So let me see if I can make this smaller. There we go. So here is the actual initial request for the webhook. So what Nihilus is doing is making a call to this endpoint and it's saying, hey, does this webhook actually exist or does this endpoint, is this endpoint actually active? And it's sending, uh, let's see here, it is sending an actual challenge uh, parameter that we need to send back. So we need to take this value and we need to send it back to Nihilus before the webhook actually becomes active. Mm -hmm. So now we've actually created the webhook. We've used Pipedream's endpoint to send to Nihilus to create a webhook. We can go ahead and test out the actual webhook. Cool. So there are a few ways we can test out the webhook, um, but we do need to do a few things, which we may not cover in this video, but you do need an active or connected account. Yep. And the best way to do that is you can actually use the Nihilus dashboard to create a grant ID. So if I've already gone ahead and connected my account, so I have a grant ID. So for any user in your application that is connected, any of any time an event is created by that user or for that user, a webhook event will be fired. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is we can go to uh, any one of my connected accounts. So I can go into my, my Google Calendar, and from there I can create an event and I can see the actual event or webhook event fire off into uh, Pipedream. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Google Calendar. We're going to create an event. So let me just grab my calendar. I'm just going to remove some things from the calendar just to make it look a little bit cleaner. <laughs> Very noisy right now, but let me share my screen. Um, let's share screen. And all we're going to do here is we're going to just initiate a calendar being created, a calendar event being created. So I'm going to just going to pick. Uh, a 30 minute slot. And I'm just gonna say example calendar event. Um, we can also just call it uh, coding with Nihilus. Mm, nice. Um, so this is gonna be our stream. And as soon as I create this, we'll see that an actual uh, webhook will be received uh, by Pipedream. Mm -hmm. You notice here quite a few events were received. So this may be other events that are occurring, but if I take a look at the latest one, and I see the event was created. And if I scroll down, I should be able uh, to see. see the screen now. We're still seeing your oh. calendar. Ah, yeah. there we go. Let me share this tab. There we go. Yeah, so here, let me just let me just expand this. So here, what happened is that the first get request was to initiate the webhook, and then we start noticing that events are being populated or updated in my calendar. So you've noticed that we've we've seen at least ten events come in. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I would do is I would try to find the specific event that I created. So if I click on the latest one and I go to the body, I should be able to find the title that would be specific to the event that uh, we just created here. So the one is coding with Nihilus. So this nice. was the last webhook uh, event showing that we created this event and it was received. And this was uh, also another thing to note is how fast this happened. Like between jumping tabs, I was able to receive the webhook <laughs> immediately. Yes, blazing fast with P3. It's crazy. <laughs> and yeah, so that was really just how you can test out a webhook. So you would need a connected account to do that. Um, and we'll cover that. Uh, we'll share links to that as well on how to do that. Uh, but the idea is for any one of your users, you will start receiving all these webhook event, events. And I was able to create one using a Google Calendar. So I went into my Google Calendar. I created an event. Nihilus uh, saw that event occur. And then it's fired off a webhook to Pipedream where I can go ahead and inspect all the information that I received uh, for that specific event. And I can go ahead and complete any other action that I need to complete. But for more information on webhooks, everything new in V3 uh, on webhooks and everything else, go ahead and check out our de developer docs at developer.nihilus.com. And one more thing I want to highlight, I know this is something we've started talking about, we've started uh, putting out there more, is our forums. So we do have a place that all developers can go where they have questions about Nihilus, they're learning about Nihilus, uh, they want to learn about different integrations with Nihilus. So you can go to forums.nihilus.com, you can post any questions you have, and you will, you will essentially have Blog and me there waiting for you to ask questions, because we love to work with developers and help developers and answer questions on all the ways you can build with Nihilus and integrate with different platforms. Yep, totally. Just jump ahead, create an account, 
and let us know if you have any questions. We're more than happy to answer that. And let me show you what's coming next. Now that we are talking yep. about webhooks and everything, next episode is going to be also about webhooks. It's going to be a little bit different. So it's going to be how to create and read webhooks in Kotlin. Because as you know, besides Java, we also have an ACK for Kotlin. That's so, awesome. Is, uh, I'm looking yeah, forward to it. Yeah, yeah, it's basically the same package as, as Java, as I said. Uh, but Kotlin is a completely different language in terms of code and everything. So you're going to see it's going to be nice. Oh, that's going to be uh, good. Looking forward to that. Yep. Uh, today, episode has been great. I mean, personally, I have never used Pipe Dream, uh, but just played in a way that it's really compelling. And even though I don't do Note, I just want to go and try it out a little bit. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, you should definitely check it out. I, I think for any type of webhook, there's always a tool that you'll need to kind of get started with it. And it's it's one of those great tools you can integrate and start building right away. Cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, so that's that's the stream, the live stream for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Please check us out at Nihilus.com um, and the interwebs. We are everywhere at Nihilus. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye, everyone. Take care. Thanks, everyone.